Good morning. This is Pastor Francis Johnson. This is the day that the Lord has made and we rejoice and we are glad in it. It's January 31st, 2021. This is a fifth Sunday. So we're not in the sanctuary at Magnolia or Mount Moriah. This is an opportunity for you to connect with God at home uh, with your family, uh, which we have grown accustomed to in the midst of this pandemic. But I want you to be intentional about your rest, about your Sabbath, about your relaxation, about your Sabbath, um, about your reconnection today, your Sabbath. God made the Sabbath for us and not us for the Sabbath. And so on this day, I hope that you will take your rest, find relaxation and ensure that you have that strong connection uh, with our creator. On this Sunday, we are grateful for the word of God. And I am so thankful that uh, there's a passage that really speaks in time to where we are in our lecturary reading from Mark, the first chapter, verses 21 through 28. Listen with me as I read from the Message Bible. It says they entered Capernaum and when the Sabbath arrived, Jesus lost no time in getting to the meeting place. He spent the day teaching and they were surprised at his teaching. So forthright, so confident, not quibbling or quoting like religious scholars. Suddenly, while still in the meeting place, he was interrupted by a man who was deeply disturbed and yelling out, what business do you have here with us, Jesus Nazarene? I know what you're up to. You are the Holy One of God and you've come to destroy us. Jesus shut him up. Quiet, get him out of here. And the afflicting spirit threw the man into spasms. He was protesting loudly and got out. Everyone there was spellbound, buzzing with curiosity. What's going on here? A new teaching that does what it says. He shuts up defiling demonic spirits and tells them to get lost. And news traveled fast and soon was all over Galilee that there was a teaching that does what it says. On this Sunday, uh, as I read that lecturary reading, um, this fourth Sunday after Epiphany, we continue to arrive at new revelations and new understandings in this moment that we lift up this ideal of the unholy interruption. That we lift up this idea that there's always truth, uh, even in the midst of those unholy interruptions that can make us truly free. If we have the faith and we have the tenacity to look at the truth for what it is. And then finally, uh, that we come to the position uh, that what we are required to do in word and deed is to have a gospel that does what it says. And so in the midst of this unholy interruption where Jesus is teaching in the synagogue, uh, we find ourselves in the midst of unholy interruptions like the unholy interruption that is an insurrection on January the 6th at our national capital, at the seat of our democracy. The unholy interruptions of uh, representatives, even from Georgia, uh, who spew out conspiracy theories and are hate mongering. The unholy interruptions of uh, a former president uh, banished to Florida, but still exercising far too much control uh, over our national politics. The unholy interruptions of COVID, as well as the other crisis that confront so many in our community um, and are touching people in the midst of our congregations. The unholy interruptions of uh, the debt burden that so many of you are carrying in terms of your student loans and mortgages, while there seems to be quibbling and quoting or over what difference raising the minimum wage to a living wage would make, we know it would make a tremendous difference. The unholy interruptions of people politicking while uh, our lives hang in the balance. These unholy interruptions have to be called out with confidence. 
We have to be able to say that January 6 was an insurrection of white nationalism rooted in a supremacy doctrine that is wrong, that is evil, and that is sin. We have to call it out by name every time we see it uh, at the national capital or you see it reflected in the lending practices of banks in your community or the policing practices of those we pay to serve and protect us every day. We got to call it out with confidence, knowing that we are right. We are right. We were right about the rise of the religious right, that they were wrong about most of what they were saying. We were, we were right about uh, the unholy presence of uh, Donald Trump in the White House for four years and the damage he would do to our democracy. We were right, we were right that domestic terrorists, whether they're in clothed in white sheets a generation ago, whether they show up in business suits, judges robes sometimes, preachers collars and the like, that they were wrong. They were wrong about God, they were wrong about this world, they were wrong about the order of men in this world. And so in the midst of all of that, uh, we speak with confidence today that we are unashamedly black, unapologetically Christian, and that we know that God is the God of liberation, calling us to it for ourselves, even as we fight for it uh, in the world around us, uh, for those around us. The unholy interruptions, the truth is there in the midst. You hear the demonic spirit saying to Jesus, what do you have with us? Leave us here where folks just want to talk about religion, but don't want to really be about it. Leave us here. This is where we want to dwell, where people use long quotes and words that tickle the ears, but do not prick the hearts. Leave us here. We have found comfort in the synagogue of people who talk about God, but never want the divinity that is on and in and through and all about them uh, to ever be released. And so today, there's a truth if we're willing to uh, have the courage to look squarely at it. And that truth is we have the power to rid ourselves of these demonic forces. We can tell them to get out. We can create a sacred and safe space for ourselves uh, and for our children and for our community. And we can command that all that is our birthright as human beings uh, be delivered to us. It's long overdue and it should be delivered with interest. And so in the midst of this day, I'm celebrating that, celebrating that. And then ultimately, uh, if we do that, we will have uh, the kind of gospel that excited Galilee, that's exciting the world, a gospel that does what it says, a, a, a message that delivers good news. And so the good news on today is uh, that these unholy interruptions happen. There is truth in the midst of them. Look for that truth. It will make you free. It will make all of us free. And ultimately, it's all about having a real alignment. The God that we preach about, that we talk about, that we say is real, real in our soul. Uh, and what we see manifest in our life all around us. I am so grateful for this time to connect with you on this last day of January. It seems as if uh, 2021 could never come. And when it arrived, oh, wow, we've blown all the way through the first month already. And what uh, an exciting month it has been. This year at Mount Moriah and Magnolia, we continue with this theme thriving in 2021. 2020 was about surviving, holding on making it through. And if you did, you've done a lot. But 2021 is about thriving. It is about flourishing, experiencing positive growth. It is about thriving, even in the midst of crisis. There are opportunities for each of us to thrive. I look forward to exploring that with you as we continue in the midst of this year. Tomorrow begins Black History Month, a particular focus uh, on Black history, uh, although we're black 365 days of the year, we appreciate the month where the national attention can be focused uh, on our history and our heritage. And tomorrow also marks February 1st, marks Freedom Day. 
Freedom Day was a uh, celebratory call for African Americans uh, uh, to remember uh, that freedom uh, is is always uh, it always comes with a cost. It was lifted by Richard Wright, uh, of course, who's the founder of what we know now as Savannah State University. Uh, and on tomorrow, I uh, hope to be down at Savannah State University commemorating Freedom Day with uh, his uh, granddaughter, Dr. Carolyn Jordan, uh, who runs the Wright Mentoring Program on the campus. We're grateful to partner uh, with Savannah State uh, through Davis Bozeman Johnson, our law firm, our partners, Maoli Davis and Rob Bozeman. I uh, look forward to participating in this Freedom Day uh, call uh, for us to focus on what it means to be free and what should free people be doing in, in, in the light of all the crisis that we see around us. What should free people be doing with all the resources that are at our disposal? What should free people uh, be doing um, with this new birth of uh, political power in Georgia uh, and in this nation? And so it's an important call to action. And I hope that you uh, consider Richard Wright, consider Savannah State University and all of the other things that Richard Wright contributed to in terms of the forward movement of our people. And so I am looking forward to spending time today uh, at home with uh, the boys and Mika. And I hope that you would do the same. This is Sabbath. God made it for us. Take your rest, find some relaxation, and make sure that you connect with your creator on, to, on this day. So that when you get up and face tomorrow, if it is God's will that we are here in the land of the, this living, uh, that uh, we can do it with the confidence that's at the heart of uh, Mark 1, verses 21 through 28. And so as we conclude this, this little chat today, I want you to know that I love you and I am praying for you and your family. And of course, uh, if you want to uh, reach us, you can simply connect with us uh, at 912-225-3151. Uh, That's our new church phone number. You can connect online at the church websites, uh, Mount Moriah Church online, Magnolia Baptist Church online. Some of you may want to give on this day. You can do so simply by texting the word blessed. If you're at Mount Moriah, you can do so to 912-225-6531. If you're at Magnolia, you can text the word blessed to 912-274-8802. We look forward to connecting with you all again very soon. Stay safe and be blessed.